So you just acquired a new to you camper trailer. In this case, it's a single axle, about 3,500 pounds, which puts it comfortably over the thousand pounds or so that you really should be toying with that trailer brakes. Brand new 2020 4Runner to tow it with. But unfortunately, in spite of the fact that Toyota has felt that this vehicle is rated for 5,000 pounds, that's 2,268 kilograms, Canadian friends, there is no dealer or factory trailer brake controller built into this vehicle. And this is a problem that a lot of the, the crossovers seem to have for some reason. Pickup trucks, yeah, trailer brake controllers, no problem. Crossovers, even some of them rated like 7,000 pounds, no brake controller. Anyway, what are you going to do? Well, you have some cubby bins here. You might be able to mount a trailer brake controller in there. But quite frankly, these things are hideously ugly and it's just going to hang out of there like some kind of growth. Reminding you of the nastiness of itself the entire time you're not using it. The classic under the dash spot. Mm, nothing says I've bashed my kneecaps like a trailer brake controller under here. So here's a good example of an under dash trailer brake controller. Pretty. And when I say about knee smashing, imagine we get in a crash and my lovely hairy knee encounters that thing. But you're not going to be able to do it anyway because that's an airbag. And you really don't want to have a trailer brake controller fired at you at 200 miles an hour. If you've got that airbag going off, chances are you've got enough excitement. So, wireless, yeah, wireless options exist. Kurt makes one called the Echo. Plugs into your seven pin control, uh, your seven pin connector, sorry. Uh, in this vehicle, that seven pin hangs down at a kind of an odd angle. If you've got four or five inch long Kurt Echo hanging out of that, and then the actual electrical connector for the trailer hanging out of that, kind of low, kind of vulnerable, looks like it wants to fall out. Not really all that excited about it anyway. Granted, if it loses communication with the phone, it just defaults to what it was doing last. That's not a problem, but no, thank you. Not in this vehicle anyway. Takancha has one that mounts to the trailer, but if you have more than one trailer, which we do not, you need more than one controller, so yeah, no, maybe in future I get another trailer, maybe I, I borrow a trailer for towing like garden tractor or something. No, nope, not into that. So Kurt also makes one called the Spectrum. It's got a remote mounted knob. All you got to do is find a piece of real estate somewhere to mount that knob to. Let's drill some holes in that. No, not drilling holes in that. Let's stick it on that. No, there's no flat spot. Hmm. Wait a minute. There's another company. Red Arc. Now, this is version two of this controller. It actually has a small knob that does the controlling. You can see it here. Version 3, the knob is a little different shape and, it, and it's red. Version 3 is out in Australia. Why Australia, you ask? Well, that's where Red Arc is from. And it's kind of unique. They do make a simpler one that does only time-based uh, brake controlling. This one does both. It does proportional, so it senses how hard the tow vehicle is, is slowing and applies the brakes accordingly. So it varies the braking pressure just based on how much gain you give it. Or you can quite easily, with just a few presses of the knob, turn it into a time delay. So if you are the kind that likes going off-roading with a trailer, apparently that's, that's the way to do it. I don't know, I don't plan on dragging our camper off-road, at least not deliberately. But why, why would you pick this one? I mean, aside from the fact that it's a nice little tiny knob, not hard to find a spot for that if you drill a hole in a dash of a vehicle. Ah, but you don't have to drill a hole. Because in Australia, Toyotas are popular tow vehicles. So guess what these guys make? Sorry about that. They make a blank. Specifically for this controller. To go into one of those spots. Now that is awesome. Now based on the fact that this uses uh, different colors of uh, illumination to tell you what it's doing. You kind of want to be able to put it somewhere that you're going to be able to see it. So some of these are blocked by the steering wheel room when you're sitting in it. That's not ideal. There's another cool little spot over here. Some forerunners apparently that's a party mode button. I really need to find myself a party mode button just to put one in because you know party mode. So we're gonna we're gonna put this thing over here, and I think. For the sake of it, I think the, the lower spot is going to be the, the preferable one because you can see it if you want to see it, but it's not staring you in the face. 
and you can reach it without bending too far. I would have liked to have had the control on the right side, but the party mode location there is kind of countersunk. It would make it difficult to actually grasp the knob. I think this is going to be the winner. And it's nice because there actually is a factory trailer brake wiring connector. Right there you are. It's still taped into the harness. Just uh, That's the fuse box. And the parking brake pedal to so see you have some idea where this is. This is going to tie you right into that. So we're going to see if it's as easy to install as uh, I've been led to believe. One of the most difficult things is to figure out where you're going to put the module. The module itself is not really all that big. It's, you know, slightly larger than palm sized. And it can be mounted in any direction you want it to be. Upside down, backwards, they don't care. But it has to be securely mounted. And my preference would be to be mounted top and bottom. There's a nice spot behind the fuse box here, but I'll never get it at the top to uh, put a second fastener in it. So I think we're going to go up underneath the dash. There's a bracket up here. The only way I'm going to get at that is by pulling off the kick panel and the lower dash. So if you decide to fully remove the kick panel, you'll need to undo this little guy, and you will swear that the threads on this thing are 18 feet long. But it will come off with some perseverance. Taking the sill plate and the kick panel off allows us to get to this fastener. We will need to take that off and the one under this cover. To get that panel off, it's going to give us easy access to that blank too, but the, the main purpose of this is to allow access to the bracket behind that we want to mount this controller to. So you're going to end up having to pull off this piece of trim that goes on the left side of the climate controls. You have no choice because you need to take it off. And it's because this little lip here is actually trapped underneath it. The beauty is, is now we've got this off. We can get to the little finger tabs that hold these switches in. There's one on the top and the bottom. If you squeeze them and press, the blank will come out. Now you have a spot to mount your red arc control. And we've decided on this one. There's a bezel that goes around this. We're leaving it off. You can see the LED there. Uh, the bezel actually ends up covering part of the word trailer. And quite honestly, I don't think it's necessary. It would need to be trimmed anyway. And this little guy here should just fit into there. Then it's almost like a internet cable that plugs this into the module. So as luck would have it, we actually have two holes that line up in the brake pedal bracket. One of them is threaded. One of them is not. But that's okay, because we can put a nut and washer on the back of that. And although this bracket is not completely flat, we can stack a couple of washers there to make it happy. And you're not going to find anything much more solid to mount to than a brake pedal bracket. Necessity of having holes that the fasteners that we need to fit through will go through and no believe me Torx would not be my first choice but I did want something with a compact head on it because of the space limitations we have for installing it so uh, looks like a cap screw it's going to be. Red Arc provides a cable with a 90 at one end and a straight at the other we're going to use the 90 at this end just because it keeps it from wanting to be pressed up against the outside of the steering column shaft. And although this does have tilt steering, we've already verified that the tilt steering does not move enough to actually interfere in this case. And then, of course, we'll just tie up any extra cable so that it's not a potential source of rattles. Leaving our free end available there for when we put the trim panel back in. So, not particularly complicated wiring. However, if you're someone who's used to wiring cars and not trailers, you may find some of the color choices interesting. Like, for instance... Black, as you can see, actually marked under red arc harness. That's nice. That's actually battery positive. White is actually battery ground. The red is brake light, and the blue is going to be the trailer brake output to the vehicle. Toyota's wiring colors are, well, I guess if you're into Toyotas, maybe this would make some sense to you. For anyone else, it just seems almost like it's random. Thankfully, they do give you a little instruction manual. And if we look at that, we'll see that black on the Toyota harness is the trailer brake power. That's good because it's black on the trailer brake also. It's nice. 
Green is a headlamp switch to vehicle taillights. Now, why you would want to have parking light feed and a trailer brake controller, I have no idea. We are going to leave this wire separate and just taped up in the harness so it doesn't touch anything because there's nothing here that requires any kind of parking light feed. The green yellow wire in the Toyota harness is the stop lamp switch. Now, Toyota calls that an input. It's not actually just an input. Yes, the trailer brake controller would use that as an input if you were using the time delay mode to know when the brakes are being applied. But also, if you're manually controlling the brake controller, it needs to turn on the, the lights on the back to warn people that you're slowing. Even if it is only the trailer doing the braking, it still needs to have brake lights. So that will actually backfeed the vehicle's brake lights. White, black, trailer ground, that's handy. White is the ground in the uh, trailer harness. We like that. And yellow, finally, is Toyota's trailer brake feed to the rear of the vehicle for the trailer. That, of course, is the blue wire out of the Red Arc harness and most other trailer brake controllers. We have used butt connectors, but these are not just any butt connector. They are a, a heat shrink style butt connector. There's actually adhesive in here, so that is about as positive a connection as you're ever going to get. There would be nothing wrong with using solder. I'd be a little bit less excited about using just regular butt connectors, but being that it is inside up underneath the dash and shouldn't see moisture, in theory, as long as you've got a good mechanical connection, that should work just fine too. Well, as it turns out, and I've just discovered this, Toyota is a pre-collision system, which starting in 2020 is standard on the 4Runner, but it's been on some of their other vehicles for a while. It doesn't like having that circuit backfed. Not one little bit, and in fact it uh, freaks the whole thing out and it sends a bunch of warning messages. So, what you end up having to do is you have to put a diode. I don't know if you can see it, but shrink wrapped into this, there's a small diode. Really, all this circuit is doing is, is, is just sending brake light switched power to the trailer brake controller to tell it the lights are on. It's not really supplying power to anything, it's basically an input. The diode prevents the electricity from coming back out of the trailer brake controller when you manually apply it. And as long as you're not manually applying it backwards through that wire, it seems the Toyota is perfectly happy. So the downside here is, is of course, if you are manually applying the trailer brakes, you are not applying brake lights on the vehicle. So uh, maybe you might want to just touch the actual brake pedal at the time enough to put the brake lights on to let the guy behind you know what's going on because... Unlike every other vehicle with trailer brakes in the universe, apparently Toyotas do not like that. And this is the solution. It's a diode. So it didn't really take too much longer after our initial test drive with it flashing blue and green to learn its orientation and, and to uh, become fully proportional. Proportional braking works actually pretty well. The sensitivity is excellent. I've had a couple of panic stops with the trailer now and uh, it, it has reacted just fine. Now, if I were wanting to manually apply the brakes, let's say we had the gain set there, I can push and hold, and that applies them, and you can change the amount of gain you're getting, how hard it's applying the brakes. And if I wanted to do the time delay style, the older style, you have to put it to zero. You have to put your foot on the brake, and then tap, and there you go. Now you are in the probably best considered off-road mode. You want to put it back. Again, you have it at zero. Foot on a brake, double tap, you're back to blue. It's a really straightforward system. I like it. It's easy to use. It works well. And it's, it's unobtrusive. And if you don't have a trailer plugged into it, it's not illuminated. All in all, very satisfied and would totally have no problem recommending a Red Arc trailer brake controller to anybody who wants one.